Well, um, there's been some complaints um, about the Occupy Tampa encampment, uh, which you were generous enough to not only let them use, but also I understand you provided the um, the bathroom facilities for yeah. the portalets and stuff. So, I mean, really above and beyond as far as that's concerned. It's, what are you What are you hearing as far as uh, people in the neighborhood about their complaints? Well, I went down there last night. There was one person from Occupy Tampa down there. there were, all the tents were gone, <coughs> and uh, except for several, three. Have you been down there lately? Um, it's been about a week and a half yeah. since I've been down and, there. Uh, they've cleaned the place up, and. Uh, I just think the Occupy movement uh, here in Tampa is losing, not that I, I want it to or anything, it's losing steam. So the neighborhood, when I was down there last night around 8 o'clock, there was people not in the park, not on the sidewalk at the park, but across the street from the uh, bar, down the street, down there. There's a lot of people just hanging around. Uh, it would seem to me that they have more problems with people from the neighborhood than they would have from from Occupy uh, Tampa. I'm not sure what uh, the problems really are because when you have a group of people, automatically you have problems. I mean, you put. 50,000, 60,000 in the stadium, and it becomes the center of crime in Hillsborough County, in Tampa, Hillsborough County, maybe in the state of Florida at that time, because there's so many people compressed into an area. So, you know, if, if you have a movement and uh, it's successful, then it's going to generate problems. And it seems to me that. Uh, the good outweighs the bad. The good of the occupied movement, we have uh, 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 special interest groups, energy companies, we have uh, insurance companies, the industry, we have uh, all these big the Wall Street banks, and they're all buying off every legislator that, legislator that we have, just flagrantly, right in front of all of us, and it seems like nobody cares, and I think bringing attention to that type of thing is necessary. Now, um, <clears throat> when when they first started their encampment at Voices of Freedom, a lot of the people that I spoke with had um, really great plans to um, help improve the community, community gardens, community outreach events, the library, you know, just concepts like that that they wanted to really use as an opportunity to build what's really kind of a, a poor area. Um, do you think that that's still going on or has there been a shift away from that? What is your experience with um, the positive things that they well, wanted to bring to the area? Well, you know, I, I guess I've been going through some stuff myself, you know, stage four lung cancer and uh, now cataract surgery, lead just put in my eyes, so <clears throat> I've kind of been incapacitated uh, and uh, so I'm not really familiar with what they're doing to outreach down there. I plan to get a little more involved in the future. I said I went down there last night, first time in a long time. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know, uh, really, about that. So, um, one, of the, one of the complaints that I've heard is that what started out as, you know, a, a political activist group has kind of shifted into more of, like, a homeless community, a tent city, I heard it referred to as at yeah. one point. Um, do you see that as a bad thing that there's a place that people can go to, you know, maybe it's not a roof over their head, but some sort I'm, of shelter? I'm not sure that's the appropriate place. I think we have to have, we have to address the homeless issue, and I don't think the city of Tampa is doing that at all. But I'm not sure that's the appropriate appropriate place for homeless to make their home. Uh, so. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I've given them uh, recently a power of attorney so they 
so they can trespass the troublemakers and the nuisances and things like that. Um, so I think I think it's kind of evolving, and it's in the state of state of evolving right now. And uh, I think things are going to get better down there. Those complaints are are being looked at. Well, you answered one of my questions without me even having to ask about it, and that was in regards to the city of Tampa's efforts to deal with the homeless problem. Um, so we'll just skip past that. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned that when you went last night, there was only one member of Occupy Tampa there, and your kind of fear, I guess, is that it's um, the, the group is dwindling. Um, it's if, not a fear, it's just a fact. Yeah, yeah. If, if that's what's happening, what are your plans with the park? If Occupy Tampa is going to... It's the way it was before they got there. It's just it's a park that I maintain for uh, uh, actually because of for aesthetics. And I had a little money and I wanted to do some, so I bought those two lots. And <clears throat> when uh, I bought them, it was sand lots. It was just sand there. And uh, there was... A lot of drinking going on there. There was a lot of uh, uh, drugs going on there, and I uh, put the park in and kind of, you know, shut that down. And that was my intentions. And uh, it looks a little rough down there. When I went down last night, it looks a little rough. It's just a nice pe place for people to have events. We have a place there for. Uh, Music. They held some barbecues there before uh, before Occupy uh, got permission to use it, and I just made it available to the, to the neighborhood. So uh, even with the small numbers, though, are you going to continue to allow Occupy Tampa to use the park as they have been? Well, I don't think they're using it as they have been. I mean, there was a, the whole lot was uh, tents before, and now there's just one little corner that has any tents in it at all. I think they've basically kind of moved out themselves. And I spoke with Mike Veneta um, from the, the Neighborhood Association right before I came over yeah, here. Everybody has their own agenda and their own. Well, he actually said that he he was there, um, I think he said yesterday, I believe. I, I might be yeah. off a day or two on the day, but he said they actually have been cleaning up, and yeah, yeah. Um, and he's he's pleased with that. And really all he wants to see is that people are following the rules and keeping it, you know, right. um, keeping yeah, it up I to the code. It, I kept it nice. We just had the crew that went by there uh, every month and cleaned it up and made sure the trees were there. And, uh, Things were being watered and everything, and now we don't have any grass there at all. I kind of don't like that. So, so would you say you have any regrets about, you know, the last, what has it been, six months? I do not. That's not something that I deal with regrets. I do not do that. I think I think things out pretty good before. Things don't always go to plan, but I don't have any regrets because I learn from everything. I think that's all I've got.